Tonight, I'm going in depth on school choice in Oklahoma. This comes as State Superintendent Ryan Walters created an office of school choice, saying it will give options to students, more options. But critics say Walters is just giving free advertising to private schools. At last week's State Board of Education meeting, State Superintendent Ryan Walters made a big announcement. At this department, it will be a one-stop shop related to everything school choice. A new office is being created within OSDE that specifically focuses on school choice and the options for Oklahoma parents. What we've seen is continuing to provide more options for parents mean that kids and their parents have a better opportunity at success. Walter says there are multiple groups within OSDE that already focus on charter schools, private schools, and other options for parents. This office will put them under one roof. There's a few states that have these, not very many. So we're excited to be one of the first states to offer this for our parents to the state of Oklahoma. Tulsa Democrat State Representative John Waldron, who was a Tulsa public schools teacher for several years, says this new office is more of a political stunt than a necessity. And I'd like to remind uh, Superintendent Lieutenant Walters said he is the superintendent for public schools, not for private schools. Private schools can do their own advertising. We've given them $150 million in public money through the voucher program. I think they can advertise for themselves. They don't need some state office to help them find students. Waldron says school choice is a myth because private schools across the state don't have the capacity to accommodate every student who wants to go there. He says for many families, public schools are the only choice they have. He says that is where the money needs to be spent. But there are only uh, 35,000 slots in the state for private schools, and there are 700,000 public school students enrolled in Oklahoma. So until our private school system expands 20-fold, we still really aren't going to get parent choice the way the superintendent says it. One of the biggest school choice reforms happened last legislative session. State lawmakers passed what they called school choice tax credits to make private school cheaper. You'd include the credit on your annual taxes and then the money would go to the private school you're sending your kids to, or if you homeschool, you could get that money back in a tax refund. You might have heard some of them being called vouchers, but vouchers have a negative connotation of public money going to private schools. So lawmakers insisted these were not vouchers, but tax credits. Just listen to how the leader of the state Senate talked about them. By putting the income limit, we were able to raise uh, the value of the tax, tax credit for private schools in order that people who can least afford it can now afford it. But the wording for tax credit has all but gone away now, and now pretty much everyone at the state level, at all state levels of government, are just calling it what it is, a voucher program. The voucher wording played out clearly when Walters announced the creation of the new Office of School Choice. So what we will be doing is moving staff, hiring some additional staff to ensure that whether it's a charter school, a private school, through vouchers or through um, tax credits. So here are the options for school choice in Oklahoma in addition to the public school district you live in. You can use a voucher or tax credit to help cover the cost of private school or you can get a tax credit to partially cover the cost of homeschool. There are also charter schools. And in Oklahoma, there is something called open transfer. You can transfer your child from one public school district to another if they have room and you don't have to live in that district to enroll in it. A big thing critics of Oklahoma's voucher program point to is the data from the Oklahoma Tax Commission. It says many of the families taking advantage of tax credits already had children in private school before the program was put in place. Critics say vouchers give tax breaks to richer families who don't need it because they can already afford private school. I asked Governor Kevin Stitt about this earlier this year. We knew early on that, yeah, the kids that are there, uh, but if I can change the trajectory of one kid, that's great. And more schools now are starting to pop up because they know that more kids are available. Stitt told me there were still some new families that were able to apply for empty spots in private schools within the first year of the tax credit program. He says the way the system is designed, more money for more families will kick in this year and next year. He believes data will show in the future more families are using the program to switch from public to private school now that they have help. School choice has not always been smooth sailing for Oklahoma. Just last week, the CFO of Epic Charter Schools took the stand against two other members of school leadership during a hearing on possible embezzlement of state funds. State Auditor Cindy Bird said under the leadership of David Cheney, Ben Harris, and former CFO Joshua Brock, Epic operated as, quote, a pyramid scheme. $69 million was taken by Harris and Cheney as payment. 
and another $145 million was taken by the company under the guise of the student learning funds. CFO Josh Brock said he would, would receive 15 years of probation if he pleads guilty and cooperates with the prosecution. He would be considered a convicted felon under the agreement. A trial against Cheney and Harris is still pending. Joining me now to talk more about school choice is Shaka Mitchell from the American Federation for Children. Shaka, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Let's talk about this Office of School Choice. Are we the first state to have this or would we be one of the first to have this? Well, you would be one of the first states to have a dedicated office of school choice, but not quite the first. There are some other states that um, that have school choice programs that have been in place for a number of years, like Arizona and Florida. And we've really seen positive things from those states, too. How is the information presented? Because I imagine there's politics involved with if I put public school at the bottom of the list and a private school at the top or something like that, there's there's the presentation it matters yeah for sure and i have to say there are a lot of things that we don't know at this point right the office of school choice hasn't been built out yet you know it hasn't been staffed up but you're right presentation does matter one of the things that we find is that these offices can have a really powerful impact on helping parents navigate the, sy the system. And that's really what it's all about, is helping parents kind of navigate what's a new system. It, this is different from how you and I, you know, looked for schools when we were younger. And so parents wanna know, well, what are my options? What are my public school options? What are my private school options? And how can I access those? And that's really what these offices can help with. What should we be looking at when it comes to other states doing this that other parents are used to by now? Yeah, I think some things to keep an eye out for is really just ease of use. So for instance, um, what you're really trying to do is make it super simple for parents um, to navigate the system. So for instance, you want to make sure that the website is accessible, not just on a computer, but via mobile, right? Most of us are using our phones all the time anyway. So you want to make sure that information is accessible. Can a parent, for instance, maybe even apply for the parental choice tax credit scholarship program directly from their phone? That would be something that I think we'd want to keep an eye out for in the future. You want to make sure the information is really um, short and, and digestible. So based on my income, for instance, what kind of scholarship might I expect? And then where can I take that scholarship? So it's some pretty pretty simple pieces of information, but these can have a big impact on getting kids in the right seat. We have open transfer in Oklahoma. Would I be able to compare public school district to public school district? Is that how it's done in other states as well? That's a good question, and it's really going to depend on the scale and the scope of this office. One of the things that we at the American Federation for Children would sort of caution is you're, we're not trying to build another department of education, right? This is really just meant to be a feature to help parents um, access the program and, and get through the process really quickly. Because at the end of the day, the relationship needs to be between a family and the school, not between the family and another department of education. And so, you know, whether or not the this new office wants to take on all of those things is a little TBD. My guess is going to be that it probably doesn't want to take all those things on. Now, this hasn't always been been sunshine and rainbows. There are some critics to it saying we've invested so much in public school and now we are trying to steer families to another product. Can you address that kind of, uh, I guess, accusation, if you will, that that we are trying to steer families away from the, the traditional product? Yeah, I think that when people um, talk about the program in in, you know, those terms, they really underestimate parents. Parents are going to find a school and they're going to, to identify schools that work best for their kids. And if you're in a neighborhood where your zone public school works for your child, well, fantastic. Nothing has to change for you. And I think parents realize that. So I don't think parents are going to be, you know, duped by um, some website that's out there. Uh, <laughs> there's not going to be some, some power of suggestion via website that happens. Parents um, know what's best for their kids, and this is really going to empower them to make those choices. Shaka Mitchell, thank you so much for joining me today on the program. I appreciate it. Thank you.